Thanks for checking out another Indie Pool podcast, turning you on to more independent music and the people who make it. And these days, there are many avenues for folks to get their music heard, but it takes a lot of work. And one of the most tireless musicians I've met is jazz keyboardist John Hammond. We will hear his story in his own words in a bit, but first I would like you to know that you can catch John's podcast called The Hammond Cast on KYOURadio.com at 3 p.m. daily Pacific time. Or take a look at his website at johnhammondband.com. That's J O N. John stopped by our Indie Pool studio recently to share his music and stories, and we will hear some live in-studio stuff as well as tunes from his latest release recorded in Germany called the NDR Sessions Project. But right now, let's welcome into the Indie Pool, John Hammond. What a guest. Jazz organist extraordinaire. All right, thank you very much, John. And accordion. Yes, sir. And My a, first instrument. And any other keyboard. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, I consider myself a specialist for organ and accordion. Because there are so many great pianists that, uh, you know, when I went to Europe the first time, I decided, why uh, uh, try to compete with all those piano players? I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond and stick with the accordion and the organ. So, But, uh, man, it's great to be here. And it's uh, so nice to see you in person. I hear your voice all the time on the radio. And <laughs> you're one of my favorite voices on the, oh, on the band. I got, I got to tell you, you know. No, you're, you're got so, John, a, you... Uh, great you... voice. Grew up in the Bay Area? That's true. I wasn't born here, but... Uh, Where were you born? I was born in Chicago, in the Windy City. Hmm. And I have uh, very vivid memories of Chicago and uh, a lot of stories that I've heard and still remember a few things. But uh, we came out here in 1957. I was four years old. And uh, my father decided he wanted to raise the family in a a tamer place than Chicago, you know, because, uh, you know, Chicago had a pretty bad rep uh, back in those days, actually. But at least you came away from Chicago with that great music. Yeah, (laughs) you know, I mean, uh, we listened to music all the time in the house then. I still uh, remember, even though I left it at the age of four, uh, we had one of the first houses on the block that had air conditioning in one room. My dad installed an air conditioner, and we had a piano, and we had a mono uh, uh, hi-fi system. And I remember they used to play Harry Belafonte, the, the the banana boat song, you know. So John's dad thought that moving the family from dangerous Chicago to a more easygoing California was the right thing to do. Little did he know the era they were moving into, literally. He had no idea what was about to happen in the 60s mm-hmm. in Berkeley, and I was there for all of it. And I'm very happy and thankful that I could be there and be a part of it. But, you know, he was uh, shocked and surprised. He really didn't uh, expect Berkeley to become the epicenter of political activism. And the Vietnam War was happening during the 60s, and a lot of uh, protesting, uh, questioning of authority, and out of it came a lot of music. And you came up playing, uh, learning music at that point, right? Yes. And playing and... And there was a time that John moved back east once again to get some training at the Berklee College of Music. Once again, in the Indie Pool, we are talking with John Hammond today, so let's listen and learn. You brought your keyboard here. Tell me, could you you noodle around on something that you might have played when you were 12 years old? Yeah, actually, I started writing music when I was about 14, 15 years old. I started Mm -hmm. writing tunes. And the first day when I came to Berklee College of Music, I met Todd Anderson after class he was there at the piano writing something down playing it and i had this progression that i wrote when i was 15 years old it was called get back in the groove and i really didn't know you know what to do with it at the time and i showed it to him and he ended up uh, arranging it and for his band you know and it's kind of a i call this like the magic chord you know like like some keys and some tonalities have a certain kind of a flavor to them and the key of D major for some reason is a very bright uh, key you know uh, then you got the minor keys you know A minor and D minor they're a little you know darker you know a little more and C minor you know very bluesy you know mm-hmm. but the, the D major you know so the, the most basic chord you can play is a D major right so there's that but then I, I would go to this other chord that I called it the magic chord you know you know and then it moves on down 
And actually what that is, is like, I learned later that that's a different inversion of another chord, you know? So <laughs> they call that uh, F sharp seventh in the first inversion, you know? <laughs> so, oh, but, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's just like uh, this progression goes like this. Back in the groove, you yeah. wrote that when you were 15. But you, this is the one you, I've heard it on one of your Hammond casts or a couple of right. them. Right, you dedicated to the uh, folks and Katrina, you know. All the... Yeah, I have a few different versions of that tune because I've <laughs> had it kicking around for a number of years yeah. now. Because I'm 15 years <laughs> old, was a few years ago now. So I, don't, I don't know what happened, man. It seems like it was yesterday. You know? <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. It does, you know. <laughs> we're visiting with John Hammond today in the Indie Pool. I'm John Russell, and I want to remind you that if you go to his website johnhammondband.com you'll find out a lot more about john as well but also you'll see where you can purchase some music that he's put together he's got a few cds out there now including the latest one the ndr sessions project actually three records on my own name currently out there on the market and on itunes and all that right and uh as far as uh, my recordings I'm, I'm on some other people's records as well but it's mostly my own records, you know. I don't get called for a lot of dates. Once in a while, I get a date, but I'm kind of a specialty act, you know, because I play the bass line. So, mm -hmm. so that's my own thing. Three records. So okay, and the and the latest one uh, just came out a few months ago. Yeah, a couple of months ago, the NDR Sessions Project. Right. And uh, talk about that one a little bit, and maybe you could uh, play something off this. Yeah, course. that'd be great. I'm I'm very proud of this album. I'm I'm so happy and relieved to have uh, finished it. And uh, we paid all the Harry Fox fees, you know. So this is the first album. This is something I wanted to do for a long time, John. First of all, you know, to cover jazz classics, American standards from the American, the American songbook, some of the most famous tunes, you know, that have become almost like American folk songs, you know, like Duke Ellington's, Duke Ellington's uh, Satin Doll, you know, mm -hmm. Hoagie Carmichael's Skylark and all this stuff. And I, I really thought, well, you know, this is a sign of maturity. You know, when I can play these tunes true to the composition, you know, not hack them up and try to make it sound like a, like a hip hop song or, a, right. you know, a smooth <laughs> jazz thing, you know, but to really play it, you know, so that the cat who wrote the tune would be proud of it, you know. And over the years, I got to know and play with these musicians from the NDR Big Band. And, you know, NDR Radio, for those of you who don't know, NDR stands for Norddeutscher Rundfunk. And that's the North German Broadcasting System. Hmm. It's the equivalent in Germany, uh, what BBC is to England, that's uh, to Germany. They have their and own. And what KYOU is to America. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the world. <laughs> because this is, this is the... Bay Area's radio, man, you know, and I'm happy to be a part of the Bay Area radio because this is what inspired me since I got my very first radio in 1958, which was a, a rocket-shaped crystal radio that I used to go to sleep every night with the earplug <laughs> in, and listen to uh, KEWB, KFRC, and 
all the great stations that were on KDIA, K- KSOL. You know, but um, so this station, NDR, I became uh, sponsored by a great uh, journalist and broadcaster there, Knut Benzner, and I was there for two years and I got to know all these great musicians. So this station has its own orchestra. It's got a jazz big band with international all star musicians, a choir. And all the engineers are running around in white jackets like doctors. <laughs> and they in-house service every machine in there. They can fix anything. They have the best microphones in the world. And the best cafeteria I've ever eaten in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we rec- we got to record this album. And I, I'm very happy the way it came out. This is, certainly it's the best recorded record I ever got to do. Well, let's, let's hear one of your favorites off the record live here in the studio now. All right. Dynamite. <laughs> it's John Hammond on the Indie Pool. Thank you very much. I did some standards on this, like I was saying. You know, some of the some of my favorite uh, standards and ballads that I was have been inspired by over the years. And one of my favorite albums that I listened to, one of my very few albums, because I never had much of a record collection. You know, <laughs> when you're moving around, you can't really... Yeah. <laughs> I had like five albums I used to listen to all the time. And one of them was... A record called Ballads, which was John Coltrane and Johnny Hardman. Oh. And I used to listen to these tunes. I had one side that used to, I just played the grooves right off the record, you know. And there was a tune called Easy Living. And uh, it goes something like this. It's like...
Yeah. Yeah, that's easy living, huh? Right. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, is uh, I had a band called Easy Living in 1977. Yeah. This was a, a typical, at the time, a seven-piece show band. And we found out real quick that it wasn't an easy living. <laughs> <laughs> We're visiting with John Hammond this time in the Indie Pool. So there are two compositions that are yours on this record. Yeah, and two originals. Uh, we, I we, you started to talk about Payphone Johnny. Where, where did the inspiration for that one come from? Well, actually, I, I have racked up a pretty uh, sizable phone tab uh, on more than one occasion. But uh, at this one time uh, when I was uh, putting the record together with this German label... Uh, I would call Germany from my phone and uh, uh, Bert, the cat from the record label, is a very nice guy, you know. And his English is not bad, you know, but it's a little bit slow, you know. And the calls were very expensive. This was before, you know, you could speak for just a few cents a minute, you know. So, you know, we had a lot to talk about. <laughs> when you're putting a record together, you find out real quick there's a lot of things that you need to... Uh, talk about is the way the record's going to be put together and the artwork and you know the concept and everything so i used to call him up and it would be so painfully slow you know and so, <laughs> so I, I say bert you know uh, this is a really expensive phone call man you think you would speak a little faster you know and then that would mess him up even more you know he'd go uh uh faster <laughs> yes you know, and then, you know, th these phone calls would, they would take, uh, finally, eventually, I, I racked up such a tab that the phone company said, okay, babe, that's it for you. You're shut down for the next five years if you can't pay this tab. And I, I really, I, I couldn't, you know, because I was, everything I had was banked on this record, you know? Yeah. So then I used to run out to the payphone on the corner of 44th and 9th Avenue at all hours of the day and night. In every type of weather you can imagine, I'd be out there in snowstorms. I'd be out there, you know, in the heat and the humidity in July in Manhattan, and I'd get a roll of quarters. And people used to see me out there all the time. They used to call me Payphone Johnny, you know. <laughs> and when I was standing out there freezing my butt off one night, and this little melody came into my head, you know, so uh, that became uh, Payphone Johnny. And it was a tune I had kicking around for, I didn't actually play it for years, but when we were doing the NDR sessions, I had a chart of it, you know, and uh, the second day of the session, I don't know, I was sort of scratching my head thinking, what are we going to play next, you know, uh, maybe we'll pull this one out and see if the cats like it, you know, <laughs> and uh, they played it down, and, and it, it had the feel of the old jazz crusaders you know with the hmm. trombone and tenor saxophone and I, I dug it so we we finished out the album with uh, with this tune payphone johnny <laughs> Thank you. 
From his latest CD, the NDR Sessions Project, there goes John Hammond, John Hammond Band, in one of his compositions called Payphone Johnny, here in the Indie Pool. At the beginning of your Hammond cast, you have that little noise, that little clink. Yes. Tell me the story about that. There's a special light yeah. that you told Well, me. you know, I'm a non-smoker. You know, I'm, a, I'm actually... Uh, Part of the reason my family moved out to California was because I, I had asthma real bad as a kid, you know, and, and the winters in, Cal- in uh, Chicago were real cold. And so, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't have been a smoker, but I was for a little bit of time. And when I was about 16, I met some very serious happening cats in the rock and roll business, and they they have beautiful girlfriends, man. I mean, they just knocked me out. I was younger, you know, and I said, man, you know, must be cool to, you know, have a lady like that. And they, had, they were driving Jaguars, and they all had these cigarette lighters, which were real slick, you know. They're called, and they, they said, these are made by a company in France. They're called St. Dupont. And when you open them up, they have a little ping, you know. <laughs> and that ping is known to a lot of people in the jet set. It's a very distinctive sound. You can be in a whole room full of people at a cocktail party or something, and you know, if you hear that ping, certain people will turn their head because they know somebody happening is in the house, you know? So when I got older, I was thinking, well, I might never get a girlfriend like that. <laughs> I already do have a nice girlfriend now, you know? I'm very lucky. And uh, I might never get the, the slick Jaguar but I think I can afford the cigarette lighter. <laughs> so, Do you have it with you? Uh, no, I don't. Because oh. you know what? Since uh, September 11, yeah. uh, we can't take those on the airplane anymore. Oh, and so I, I left it in New York. But I have one that, that pings real loud, and we made some recordings with it. And I just decided, you know, this has been a lucky sound for me, and I'm going to open up my, my first record with them. We, we recorded it, and the, the sound of the DuPont lighter is known to many of you. And if you don't know it by now, you'll know it after you hear the tune "Late Rent" because it's it's my theme song. Actually, we we closed out the NDR sessions with the, with that sound too because I I want to catch the attention of those folks, you know, because they can afford to buy the record. Yeah. <laughs> so I noticed that you have "Satin Doll" on here, one of the songs you covered yeah. on your latest record, and um... by the great Duke Ellington. In the building where I live in New York City, we have the Ellington Room, you know. Really? And every year we have a Duke Ellington birthday party, so I actually got to meet some of the people from the Duke Ellington band. Not too many of them are alive. And yeah. I know Duke Ellington's grandson, or maybe he's his great-grandson, I'm not, not really sure his name is Paul Ellington, hmm. and Paul conducts the Duke Ellington Orchestra, which who they play uh, once a week over at Birdland Jazz Club, which is right around the corner from where I live in New York City. Huh. And he's a really, really nice cat. He was born in uh, Denmark. So the old, old Duke, he got around there yeah. pretty good. You
That is a cover of Duke Ellington's Satin Doll, which is found on the John Hammond record, the NDR Sessions Project. On the record with him are Lutz Buchner on saxophone, Heinz Licius on drums, and Joe Gallardo on trombone. You are listening to John Hammond in the Indie Pool today. I'm John Russell. And John tells us about another original track. Yes, uh, No Excess Baggage Blues, uh, John. Uh, he- uh, that's sort of uh, self-explanatory when you saw me walk in the studio today. I, I haven't mastered the art of traveling light yet. No. <laughs> you know, I'm still working on it, you know. But I had this great set of wheels that uh, I actually have a few of these in various sizes. Uh, these are made by a company called um, Remen Cart a Bag with a K, you know. And I actually met the owner of the company at one of the trade shows I go to in Germany. And I told her the story about how I literally went around the world with my Hammond organ and using these wheels and a flight case that I bought the first time I went to Europe, which was on the Concorde jet in 1981. Mm. I bought a really beautiful uh, pilot's case from Halliburton because I decided I was going to need a really <laughs> slick piece of luggage for the slickest airplane in the world, you know. <laughs> and I still travel with that. However, the next time I went over to Europe, I didn't take the Concorde. I ended up going on Pakistan International Airlines, <laughs> which was uh, another experience altogether. And I, actually, I did about 25 round trips on them. Uh, you know, they're really great. Uh, but the, I actually first wrote that little blues inspired by PIA, Pakistan International Airlines, because they used to let me take all kinds of excess baggage. You know, they were very kind to me. I had a friend there at the airline. His name was Azar. You know. And he'd see me coming with this enormous amount of baggage, you know, especially if I'd be going over to Europe for, for a time. I'd not only bring my instrument, but I brought stuff to uh, uh, do my TV show. I had cameras. I had uh, editing machines. One time I even brought a fold-up bicycle, you know, and my instrument, everything, all on these wheels, you know. And so I'd get there and at the check-in, and it's, oh, Mr. Hammond, no problem, no problem, no problem, you know. So I said, I'm going to write a tune for you cats, you know. So that became No Excess Baggage Blues. And later on, I actually met the lady who has the company that makes the wheels. And they put me in their catalog. And they actually have a contest every month. And this is the Super 600 that I use. It has a pretty heavy (laughs) capacity. Every month, if you sign up online, they give away a free set of... They call it the John Hammond Super 600. So, <laughs> right. Yeah, I actually have a contest named after me. Yeah. And that's the No Excess Baggage Blues. Actually, it's, it's a lot of excess baggage is what it's about. <laughs> Thank you. 
John, I want to thank you very much for coming by. And thank you very much, have, John. We're going to have to do this again because there's just so much more to talk about. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I jumped in the Indy pool and I didn't drown, folks. I, <laughs> I brought my water wings with me. Thanks a lot for having me, John. And I, I want to thank you for doing a beautiful thing here at the station. Like I say on my show, this is the only station in the nation. Open source programming, KYOU. 15.50 a.m. on the dial. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Thank you, John, and we'll talk again. All right. Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you later now. Bye-bye. No excess baggage blues. All right. There goes John Hammond and friends. John Hammond's new record is called The NDR Sessions Project. Find out more about it by looking at his website, johnhammondband.com. That would be J-O-N hammondband.com lots of information for you about john and music that he's put out and his hammond cast a podcast which again you can hear at kyouradio.com on a daily basis at 3 p.m the john hammond afternoon slide listen for that 3 p.m pacific time i'm john russell thank you so much for listening we'll catch you next time in the indie pool (laughs) 